Hello again and welcome back. So today I'm going to do a video sort of aimed at people that are maybe religious or spiritual. A lot of the stuff I've said before here and there in, in little pieces, but I want to make you think a little bit, you know, think deeply about what you're agreeing to. For example, the consent that you grant to your intent that eventually becomes action, whether via the physical movement of your body or spoken and written words, is not without great consequence. Ignorance is no excuse. Hence the warning from Jesus. I send you out as sheep amidst the wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. And as I said before, what, what is he really saying? Well, to me, he's saying, learn the machinations, learn the system that is all around you, the wolves system. Be wise as serpents, but also be har as harmless as doves. Don't victimize other people with that knowledge. I think that's what he was saying there. And I, I, I said this in this comment, which I'm not going to read, but I'm just going to take pieces of it. But uh, I did say to them, you know, please take the following as void of judgment. Your lack of awareness has been manufactured and subsequently orchestrated. I am simply trying to shake you to waken. Tell me, are you wise as the serpents? Did birth certificates exist in biblical times? What exactly is a license? Is it permission to perform an act that would otherwise be illegal? So marriage isn't legal unless you both contract with a false idol, also known as a government? I don't think it was that way back then. I don't think it was that way uh, not too, too long ago. Way after that time, even. Things have changed and have changed for the worst. Here's another one. Is your last name, a.k.a. your sur surname, an instrument that is biblically recognized? Did they have last names in that publication? No, they did not. There were no last names back then. It is the name that, when you identify by it, which your parents unwittingly did for you the day you were born by signing the S-4 and the birth certificate, bind you to the denial of your creator by your consent to being a non-living crew member of a trusteeship. Seven years after the initiation of the contractual entity, meaning the child's name including the last name on a paper vessel, the vessel is now open for capture under the rules of maritime salvage. It is presumed to be a derelict ship. Have you ever thought about how many words have the word ship in it, in them? Is that a coincidence? It is not. Because you sign your mark using a surname, you have contracted away from your God, your offspring, your corporeal body, and complete troll, control of your mind and soul. This has all been achieved through contract. Everything is contractual. Even when you decide to internally scratch your nose, it is a contract between your essence or soul, consciousness, awareness, whatever you want to call it, and the physical. And I tell them, which I've said to you many times in these recent videos, Lastly, I must tell you, you are currently captured in a shipping, postal timeline, and banking warfare platform. So regardless of whether you, cho you are chosen book of faith, regardless of whether you read your chosen book of faith, go to a collective religious setting, or pray daily, you are without the ability to contract with God because you have turned the other cheek by taking oaths to act as something other than what you were created as. That's what these contracts are. Now I know what you're going to say. 
I don't care about contracts and all that stuff. I have my relationship with God. Contracts have no power over the glory of God's grace. Really? If volition of consent in a contract was not of utmost importance, then why is the Bible comprised of the Old and New Testament? The word testament means contract. And so, like I said, I know I've said a bunch of this stuff before, but <laughs> do you know why there are so many ways to get remedy and recourse out of this prison? It is because the prison is total bullshit. The, the wool has been pulled over our, our eyes and it's been pulled over the eyes of billions of people. And what they've done is they've manufactured the consent of all of those people. And there's such a large number of it that those people are policing ones whom choose freedom, whom choose choice. They believe through indoctrination that you do not deserve choice if it means that you might be in some danger. Freedom is not worth being in any danger. How wrong they are. Freedom has never been safe. What is safe is slavery. Slavery is safe. You'll get, you know, two or three meals. You'll, you'll survive. But there's always going to be that thumb pushing down on the top of your head and twisting. And that thumb is something that you are consenting to unwittingly. That's why you can use the Uniform Commercial Code. That's why you can use the Constitution. That's why you can use being a free man. That's why you can use correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. That's why you can use their own United States codes. That's why you can use the judicial system. All of these things you can use to get your freedom if you know how. They don't want you to know how. I'm trying to teach you how with what little I know. You just need to do some studying. Uh, you know, you can really get a lot done just by knowing how to require jurisdiction. Jurisdiction, as I've said before, means control. Do they have control over you? Do they have control over your body? Do they have control over your mind? You don't think they do, but do they? Well, they do if you have been entered into contracts or if you've entered into contracts, you put your mark on a piece of paper and you use your surname, your first and middle name connected to a last name is not you. It's not a living being. It is a contractual instrument and it is not owned by you. It is owned by the oligarchy. It is owned by the UN. It is owned by the Catholic Church. You are owned if you choose to stay in these contracts or if you just don't know any better. No mercy for the sheep. America. That's all I got today. I'll be back soon. I'm going to uh, start getting into showing you some of the answers from my quizzes of my training to become a grand jury administrator so that you can really see the workings of the court. You can see the, uh, the jargon that they use and the, the terms that are used and some of the procedure. Uh, and you're going to uh, have your eyes opened to some things uh, that will make sense uh, even though you've never heard them before and things will start to fall into place. I can promise you that. I appreciate you. Love you. See you soon.